Welcome to Spotlight on Local Artists, presented to you by Charlotte County Libraries and History. I'm Judy Domzalski, and joining me today is local artist Karen Wood, who uses her talent to create with acrylic, charcoal, oils, and watercolor. Karen, welcome. Thank you. Behind us today, I think we'll start with these paintings in particular. Let's look first of all at the one in the center, the oval painting here, um, which was presented for our Charlotte County Centennial Art Show. It's absolutely lovely. Thank you. So if you can tell us a little bit about that particular painting, because it's such a big event for us right now. And then we'll move on to the others. All that right. See behind I'd us. love to. Well, the pineapples have come and gone. I've seen different things over the years since I moved to Charlotte from Miami. I painted a bench many years ago. It's still over at Bay Shore Park and I put pineapples on it. I learned that this was a major pineapple center, late 1800s, early 1900s. So many people don't know that. Right. At any rate, it was really difficult painting on those slats, <laughs> but it was a, basically a sunset, lots of bright colors with the pineapples in the foreground. And I always thought I'd like to paint those pineapples again, only in a real painting. <laughs> well, Again, part of our history, that's what this art show, the Centennial Art Show was all about. We had to choose a subject from two of the history books. Our fascinating past was one of them, that's the first one. And it had the information about the pineapples and I had read about that for the bench contest. Right. Uh, I read further and I added several more things. Isaac Trebo, who settled Punta Gorda and his wife Virginia, big chess fans, <laughs> he loved chess. He decided, they, he bought some property there. There were some pineapples on it already. He wanted to continue to cultivate the pineapples. He added orange, orange trees, lemon trees. Whatever revenue came from the crops would pay the winners of the chess match that he wanted to have every December. And if you'll notice the sign that says chess tourney second Monday, 2.30 a.m. Well, they made I mean, a mistake. Just, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, I just tried to pack several themes from the past, the ice houses. Um, unfortunately, I had finished the painting last year, and just before it came in, I lost a beloved cat. I always wanted to put something on the dock, so I put my cat on the dock. <laughs> I love that. I love the colors. Thank and, you. Um, you are quite a rarity, actually, Karen, oh, from you. what you said, that you're actually a Florida native. Yes, ma'am. I was born in Miami. I moved to Port Charlotte in 1986 with my husband and my son. Um, Miami was getting to be a little scary at that point, yeah. and we loved it over here. It reminded us of Miami when we were growing Back up. Back in the day. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Close to the beach. <laughs> I always have to be around the water for fishing, swimming, and like that. Oh, gosh. It's nice to hear your passion about Florida. Oh. You know, it just... Um, Thank you. Yeah, a lovely thing. We'll talk about your other showings here uh, on the whiteboard. Let's go, might be a little difficult, but behind you and over here behind me, um, we have watercolor illustration. Yes, ma'am. Which you did for this beautiful book, This Loving Light of Mine, um, which is a self-published book by Amber Scott. And here we have illustrated by Karen Wood, so you're getting credit on there too. Yes, she well deserved. The artist fought for that. Um, I met her strictly online. Somebody gave her my number. She saw my things online, and she asked me what I like to do it. It was interesting because I had been thinking about illustration, but I didn't know if I could do it uh, through my real job. <laughs> I work teaching children to read. I've been exposed to hundreds of books over the years and different artists. And I wondered if I could do it. I've done a lot of things, but I didn't know if I could. And she gave me the opportunity. She was looking for somebody and I worked very closely with her and, and, and tried to give her exactly what she wanted. She had a picture in her mind. So 
Uh, and it worked out really good. I, I'm, I never stop in the middle of a project. I complete things. So she was glad for that too. So it was a real experience and it was a challenge. I learned so much about watercolor that I can't even believe the way I worked with and the way the paint, I, I was shocked. It's obvious to me that that's a great direction for you to go in, I think. <laughs> I don't uh, know, thank you, we'll I like, see. I like the pictures in the book very much, but I'm so glad that you brought the watercolors because it really brings the subject out a lot, yeah. a lot more. So also, what's this loveliness behind me? Well, it's actually, that's called a batik. Mm -hmm. And it's like a 3,000 year old art from Java. Mm -hmm. My aunt, who was an artist, introduced me to many, many, many different mediums. And this was one of them. You create a picture with dyes and wax. And I can show you just a little bit better with this one, how it works. I've experimented a lot. She taught me the basics, but I've experimented. <clears throat> this one, where, I all, where you see the white, Okay, mm -hmm. I started with a white piece of fabric. The wax went on immediately on the white that I wanted to remain as white and light in color as possible. And then you add color, you can do it different ways. You can immerse it in a dye bath, but you go from lightest to darkest color. This has very little color. You can see that has a lot more in it. It was does. More complicated, yes. yeah. Anyway, the very last color is the darkest, and you can see around the edge here, this is where the wax stopped. And this was my last dye bath, and that create, you, you crack the wax, the wax is made of paraffin and beeswax, and you get these cracks, it kind of gives it an antique -ish sort of look, if you will. I, I don't know, I'm fascinated with them, I've experimented with them. Me too. My <laughs> You use wax, it is very, very hot, so you have to dedicate equipment to it. And I'm going back like 30 years here. My aunt had an electric fry pan. Yeah. And she mixed her, she mixed her own wax, her own beeswax, her own paraffin to get it just the way she I've wanted it. I've done that. The, mm -hmm. the beeswax is softer, the paraffin's mm -hmm. a little harder. So you have to be careful where the cracks go, but you never know how it's gonna turn out. And when you're done, you take all the wax out, see the, the border will be missing when I get it on a stretcher. It's beautiful. Thank I mean, I, it's very clear that um, you have recognizable forms well, in there. Well, I've got jellyfish. That's what jellyfish, I was practicing. yeah. And I used a tool called, I believe it's called a junting. My husband oh. saw it online. You, it's like a little vessel, like or a little teapot, if you will, at the end of a stick, and you dip it in the wax. And you actually, by how you, you control it, by raising it and lowering it. And I did no drawing on this. That one I drew. I drew that one out first with a Sharpie marker to re keep the lines as it gets darker and more dye gets on it. This one I didn't. So this was a real experiment for me. I like it though because you, ha you have a combination of the abstract and the sea life on there, which is, which is really nice. And the different shading in the background of the greens is, is quite lovely, actually. Well, that's where you start splashing the dye <laughs> around, and that's the fun part, too. Yeah. But yes, yeah. They're, they're, all, they're, it's, but they're a lot of fun. Again, you don't exactly know how they'll all turn out. Yeah. This is the second one I ruined the first. <laughs> I didn't have my wax right. Okay, we're going to move on to some general questions and just get to know you a little better, if that's all right. Yes. Um, as far as your educational background, do you have any training, formal art training at all? Not really. Um, art class was always my favorite class in school. Uh, I went on to community college, but I wasn't, I wasn't taking art at that point. I was taking the associate's degrees. Then I just kind of drifted away. Um, I got a job. Um, you know, boys, life has a way of just taking off and taking you with it. <laughs> um, my aunt, though, I was always consistent, always visiting her, always working in her studio. She moved around a little bit. There were a period of years that I didn't get to see her, but I was always whipping out my paints to paint a picture for somebody or do something. 
Um, but my aunt was my greatest teacher. She was a professional artist and she taught me so many different mediums and her daughter really took off to the painting and she started doing muraling in homes mm. and it was amazing and she invited me she needed people to come help her these jobs she got were just gargantuan <laughs> and so I got to go work with her and really learn exactly how she did it all I'd see a finished product for years and I didn't know exactly how how she planned and anyway so I learned a lot and I went and worked with her I was very lucky to be able to do that and that was my aunt's daughter so that was muraling I haven't done that's beautiful product. yeah um, are there any artists or other creative people that inspire you to come up with these lovely works? Uh, well, some of it just from my imagination, but again, I have to go back to my aunt. She had amazing art books. And for me to sit down and look at, you know, the masters, you know, right. everything in the Sistine Chapel, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, all those great. And then my, my brother found a picture that he sent to me. It was by an artist called Maxfield Parrish. Mm. And the figures, the, the people he did were so dreamlike. The backgrounds, the color, they were just amazing. And he actually had his, um, his models were people and children, famous people back in the early 1900s. Mm. I love his work. I can't, I can't compete with him at all, but I'm just fascinated. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you think you bring any of him out in your own work at all? Well, probably getting that's into possibly. figures now and starting, that's what I'm yes, thinking. which is new to me. Mm -hmm. um, creating figures is mm -hmm. very new to me. Uh, I don't know, he was such a master, but yeah, very, very, just influenced by so many. Really. And here she almost, I'm sure this is your intention, but she looks like she's actually part of that tree. She and, is, she's and supposed to be the part branches. of it, maybe just starting to step out. I did a painting years ago and mm. it was purchased and so I thought I'd like to try to do the fatigue yeah. in a similar way. In fact, I had a girlfriend that lived across the street from me. She was very, very slim and I said, would you put your bathing suit on and pose for me because I had to get the body <laughs> yeah. right, you know, I had right. to get the proportion right. right. She did and so that's, that's kind of how that one came about. Yeah. But I like the fall colors, the oranges, the yellows. And still the brightness of the you know the purple and pinks and well, but quite lovely will, over time if you you expose them to a lot of sunlight they mm -hmm. will fade so if you have one that you wish to hang in your home you kind of want a place that is not getting away the from sunlight. the sun yes yeah exactly. and you're the florida expert of course born and raised <laughs> well, i don't know about that <laughs> but you know who else i learned about you asked who influenced me mm. the highwaymen oh the highway yeah men. There was an exhibit here, it's mm -hmm. been some years now, mm -hmm. and I was just fascinated. They, they just lived out there, they painted these beautiful sunsets, yeah. anything that was Florida, and sold their yeah. work out of the back of the car and drove, I just, yeah. I couldn't imagine living that way. It must have been a lot of fun though. They're selling for quite a price now. <laughs> I know that, but yeah. the vivid colors that yes. some of them use definitely influence, yeah, yeah I would say that, yeah. without me really knowing it, but yes. Nice, nice to have been in on the ground floor there <laughs> on that one. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you use a number of different mediums to create your artwork. So we have acrylic, oil, charcoal, I believe I read, yes. and watercolor. Yes. So do you have a favorite or do you feel more accomplished in one medium than the other? Not really. Um, to me, the more you do, the better you get, the more th more things you discover, uh, like the happy accidents, things happen. It's like, oh my gosh, did I do that? You don't know how it happens. I mean, I just have to say that. I don't care if it's a mural or something on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, I started with oil paints when mm -hmm. I was not able to go to my aunt's. There was a lady that lived down the street from me. She gave piano lessons, <laughs> violin lessons, and also oil painting lessons. Uh -huh. She was quite good with oil paint. She was a very accomplished lady. She was very young. Um, my mother said that, yes, I could go ahead and go down and have lessons with her maybe once a week. 
Unfortunately, that didn't last too long. My parents divorced and my mother just couldn't afford. It wasn't that much anyway, but this is how Mimi made her a living. Wow. Oh. Right? And there were a lot of children. She gave all kinds of lessons, as I say, piano, violin, but that's how she made her living. Mm. And so I didn't know what to do, so I went down and I made a deal with her. I said, look, I said, I'll clean your house. Uh, I'll clean the bathrooms, I'll wash dishes, I'll vacuum, I'll dust, I said, and so she was on board with that. And so I kept going to be, <laughs> and she didn't mind because she, you know, it was her passion too, and she loved children, she didn't have any. Aww. And so we had a lot of children in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and she enjoyed that part of it too, but she was my go-to, and so I even have some of my oil paintings. So I started with oil. I went to acrylic simply because oil paints take a lot longer to dry. Yes, we've we've had that said yes. on the interviews yeah, you've before. Yeah, probably heard that between yeah. children and cats, which go everywhere. Yes, and cats. Yes. Uh, I decided to do a portrait of my son. It's probably been about ten years ago, and I thought I'm going to do it in oils. I don't know how I'm going to keep this out of everybody's way, but I did, and mm -hmm. it turned out quite good. I like the oils. There's mm -hmm. something about the way they glide on mm -hmm. and having not used them in so many years. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, there were some new things that have happened with oil paints. There's an oil paint that's water soluble. Who knew? Yeah, I didn't know that either. So I like the oils. Mm -hmm. I just, I like to create, I guess. I get a picture, I get something in my head, and it's like, okay, let's do this. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do this. So I would say mostly acrylics, but I do like the oils, and I have worked with them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But again, acrylic, it dries so fast. You can it's layer and layer, which is a lot of what mm -hmm. I do when I paint. Mm -hmm. It works both, I think, as well with acrylics and oil. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I like them both. It depends on an individual painting, I think. It depends on the look that you're going for. You know, as you were talking about the oils, I like oils an awful lot, you know, and I'm a big Van Gogh fan myself. But, I mean, he slathered that on that canvas with a palette knife, and uh, it really is thick, because I've had the opportunity yes. to see them. Um, now that so takes a while to dry too. He definitely had no kids or cats. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, um, no, I'm not sure what I'm doing next. I would like to try more illustrating. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to market the book. It came mm -hmm. out right after COVID and the shutdown. It yes. came out in, in May. Our Christian bookstores all closed down. Mm -hmm. um, I. I had teachers that wanted me to come back to my school and bring the book and talk to the kids and um, none of that's been able to happen. So what I'm looking forward to is when things open up a little bit more and then mm -hmm. I can share the book because I would like to go back uh, and I, I still have children at the school that I know will remember me. Some of them I know re remembered that I was working on the book mm -hmm. and I've been very fortunate because I know the teachers purchased the book online so that they could, you know, show the kids, some of my friends. So now I'm not sure what I'm doing. Next. Well, it's wide open. Let me plug for our viewers your up upcoming project, which you are showing oh, right so here. Nice. Yes at Mid-County Regional Library, May 1st through August 31st of this current year, 2021. We're very excited to have that happening. I can't wait to see what you're going to bring in. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to decide. <laughs> Um, are you showing anywhere at the moment? Not at the moment, but there is a shop here in Port Charlotte and I was introduced to this woman about a year ago and she fell in love with my work. Mm -hmm. And so I have some pieces in her shop. She has a lot of local artists. You may be interviewing somebody else that has work in there. Um. Um, so at this point, that's where a lot of my work is on display. Right. And um, of course, May through August. And I hope to actually come here and talk to people that if the library remains open and things mm -hmm. are better. I hope to be able now to come and talk to people that about would, some of my work. That would be delightful. Anybody that's interested, I'd love to talk to. <laughs> that would be delightful. Thank you. We're very uh, fortunate and very much looking forward to having your oh, exhibit you. here. Um, if you'd like to, you can get a preview of Karen's artwork. 
on the Arts and Humanities website. Uh, there is contact information for Karen on that website yes, and she'd be very happy to hear from anybody who would like to contact her. Karen, it's been a delight talking to you today. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming. I appreciate you for having and me. And I, I think I'd stick with the book. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, your They're quite uh -huh. lovely. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you.